Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Following an extreme winter of power cuts, ESCOM has released a summer outlook indicating that the risk of load shedding remains for the summer months. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the outlook. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What has ESCOM said about the year to date and what is the outlook for the coming months? As we all know as South Africans, it's been a really, really difficult winter and actually a difficult year. Um, 91 days of load shedding today, to date, which is extreme. Um, and, you know, they did warn that we could have up to 100 days during winter, but that was really a worst case scenario. Uh, and it was felt that generally during the winter months, we would have, a, a, you know, most of the plant back from summer maintenance. And it usually operates as well better. Some of the plant operates better at cooler temperatures. So usually in the past, the load shedding risk, even though we have high demand in winter, used to be associated with the summer period where we have a lot of plant out for maintenance, a lot of rain that, uh, that causes problems in terms of the handling of coal. And you know the whole wet coal story that uh, goes back many years. So, but this has been a very, very intense year. And uh, for the financial year, which uh, starts on April 1, they've had 77 days of load shedding versus the whole of last financial year was 65 days. So you can see it's an extremely, very uh, dismal sort of performance. And the outlook for summer is hopefully not more of the same, but I think the risk remains quite, quite serious. And they've done a stress tested scenario where they've raised the, the base case for how much they expect to be out for unplanned outages to 13 a uh, thousand megawatts, which is hard. Used to be the old base case used to be ten thousand megawatts, and it has been rising every year as it became clearer that the coal fleet wasn't going to meet that sort of uh, base case. And then, of course, we have the summer maintenance on top of that. So, if we're in that sort of thirteen thousand sort of scenario, we should have less than twenty days, or around twenty something days of load shedding. Um, but that's sort of the, the optimistic scenario. As soon as we get worse uh, and we have more pl unplanned outages, either 1,500 megawatts more or 3,000 megawatts more, and that's the sort of stress test that they put out into the public domain. Basically, we go into a scenario really almost every day of the month. We not only having what was it, stage two load shedding under the 13,000 um, megawatts outage, we're suddenly in a sort of stage three sort of uh, setting and uh, it, it really is intensive load shedding. And we know during that period, especially during the period of the wildcat strike, we were often breaching those sort of levels of outages, you know, the more than 16,000 megawatts were out. So it is scary as we enter the summer months, which I must remind you, is generally the time where we have the, the most intense load shedding in the past. But this year, because of the strike, I think it has been more intense in winter, um, but we, we, we are in for a difficult period ahead, it looks like. What is driving the risk, and is there any light at the end of the tunnel? What's driving the risk is still the performance of the coal fleet. So we know that with the President's plan announced on the 25th of July, that's a big focus, trying to get the reliability, the energy availability factor of the coal fleet at, to a, a more normalised level. It's fallen dramatically and uh, at points has been below the 60% level and falling. So we have to recover that. But we are entering the summer maintenance period where a lot will be out for, for, um, for planned maintenance as well. So there's that risk. But it's generally down to the coal fleet. And then during this winter period, then the fact that one of the Kuberg units were out for so long and much longer than what was even um, was scheduled because we were scheduled to have a lot extended outage at Kuburg Unit 2, but that was extended beyond that uh, initial June uh, deadline. And it, they didn't even do the steam replacement. <laughs> so st uh, st uh, so uh, the, the, we're still going to have to do that uh, for that unit. And we're now going to enter the, the extended maintenance for Unit 1. So having Kuburg basically out of the system, it gives you one stage of load shedding all the time. Uh, so that those two factors, the really dismal performance of the coal fleet, exacerbated and amplified by the strike that during that uh, wildcat strike, and then uh, Kuburg being out, that's really uh, that's 
that's what we that's brought us to this very very difficult well, terrible uh, year so far and then uh, the light at the end of the tunnel really is linked to Eskom's response to the president's plan getting that energy availability factor ba back up getting the the new, new coal units that are from Madupi and Kasile operating closer to nameplate. We know there have been serious problems around that. And finishing that plant, that will add some additional capacity. Then we know there's been the, the liberalisation around embedded generation. And there's also the, the likelihood that we'll start seeing some of the procurement happening. That, that brings, within this, this sort of next three year or 36 month period, that brings Eskom estimates about 8,000 megawatts of additional supply if everything goes to plan, the, the maintenance working better than it has, the coal fleet recovering to uh, sort of more stable type levels, um, the, the new units at Madupi and Kusida performing. But then, as I say, during this period, we will have uh, Kuberg out, out at least one unit for large periods of that, for large chunks, and we've still got the risk that um, of these unplanned outages all the time. So yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but processes have been very slow. We know that bid window five, which was meant to close in April, not one project has closed. We hear that three projects are very, very close uh, to closing, but they still need then 24 months to build, you know. So a lot is gonna hinge on the supply side, I suppose on the embedded generation projects. And then Eskom, maybe coming to, with products to market to try and moderate demand through demand response. Um, so, but it's the next 24 to 36 months look difficult. In the meantime, the cost of keeping the lights on is rising as a result of an overuse of diesel. Yes, so uh, that's the big downside from a financial perspective for Eskom is how much diesel they're having to burn as this coal fleet doesn't perform and uh, with Kuberg out to stabilize the system and to get us, uh, you know, to keep us from getting into a sort of blackout scenario, but also to reduce uh, as much as possible the intensity of load shedding. We're just burning a, a, a really a big load of diesel. And under that worst case scenario of sort of 16,000 megawatts being out, we would be burning billions of rands of diesel every month. We, Operated year to date, the OCGT plant, the Eskom plant at over 16% capacity factor, <laughs> supposed to be 1%. We operated the RPP um, OCGTs at 9% capacity factor. Again, it's supposed to be more to sort of 1%. It's supposed to take us through the evening peak. It's not supposed to be, st you know, stopping load shedding right throughout the day. That's not what it's designed for. Uh, and they say the capacity factor at the RPP OCGT plants would have been higher. Uh, but they just couldn't secure the diesel. And that's a big focus for the coming period. We need to s make sure that we secure the diesel, even though financially it's a, it's a disaster for Eskom. They, they need to secure as, as much diesel as possible um, as for this period ahead. And we know that this, the fuel markets are in turmoil globally and supply has been tight and there have been periods where it's difficult to keep those tanks full. And we also know that Ankerlich still relies on, on road. And that's a, a logistical uh, sort of bottleneck. We can only send so many road tankers up to Ankerlich every day from the refinery, so it's uh, or from the import terminal. So it's uh, it is a big risk, not just financially. It's a massive burden because Nursa never gives Eskom uh, allows Eskom to recover all its diesel costs. But from a security of supply perspective, during this next period, we are going to rely have to rely on diesel and we need to have diesel stocks uh, in the tanks, and there are risks around that in the coming period too. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.